Good evening and welcome to Sunset News on Thursday, the 11th of April. As always, we bring you the news, community stories, economics, weather and sports. I am Ashun Beri. In the news tonight, President Dr. Nangolo Mbumba has posthumously conferred the honor of national heroine and directed a state funeral for Ida Jimmy Ka Erob, who was born on November 16, 1945, and passed away April the 3rd this year. This decision made under Article 32.3H of the Namibian Constitution and the Conferment of National Honors Act 2012, Act Number 11 of 2012, follows a recommendation by the National Honors Advisory Committee. President Mbumba visited the family home in Kietmans, on April 5, 2024, offering condolences and consoling the family, reflecting on Jimmy Ta Arab's immense contribution to Namibia's liberation struggle. President Bumba expressed profound respect for her unwavering courage and leadership. He acknowledged her enduring legacy as a freedom fighter and community builder, extending condolences to her children and family, the Swapo Party, and the nation at large, while praying for solace and comfort during this challenging period and wishing her soul eternal peace. Let's move over to our next story. A vinduk based farmer, Isak Nahum, is gunning for aviation company West Air Limited after one of its planes was forced to make an emergency landing in one of the fields on his farm, causing damage to his crop field. Nahum, in particulars of claims submitted, is demanding a payment of $1.8 million Namibian dollars for loss of harvesting and $1.5 million Namibian dollars because of the damage he incurred on his farm because of the emergency landing and the, that the plane was required to make now detailing the events that led to his produce being destroyed, Nahum claims that on or about 24 October 2023, the aircraft, after departing from Jose Akutako International Airport for a flight to a destination unknown to him, declared an emergency and executed an emergency landing on his farm. In the process of landing the aircraft, approximately 200 meters of the perimeter fence surrounding the center pivot irrigation system owned and operated by West Air on his farm was destroyed, Nahum said. Now, on or about 24 October 2023, defendant Julie, represented by its technical director, Mike Myers, informed plaintiff Julie, represented by his farm manager, Desiree Moyo, that no person was permitted to approach the aircraft or the peripheral areas surrounding the aircraft. According to Nahum, any repairs to the damaged fence would only be permitted upon the conclusion of investigations on the landing site and the removal of the aircraft. Now, due to the damage caused to the perimeter fence by the landing of the aircraft on the farm on the 1st of November 2023, livestock from the farm entered into the area covered by the center pivot, resulting in damages comprising the destruction of the electrical and fertigation system on the center pivot and the destruction of crops, specifically wheat, onion and barley, which was consumed by the livestock, the claim also said. Moving over to our next story, almost three years later, there is still no sign of the much anticipated Northern Referral Hospital, which was once which, once built, would reduce pressure on the Katatura Intermediate State Hospital in Vinduk. Health Minister Kalumbi Shangula once again reiterated that the state hospital project is still in the pipeline. Shangula told Namibian Sun today that just like the Nkurenkure and Oshawarongo hospitals are next in line, the Ondangwa one has not been abandoned. The minister said the Northern Hospital was not started because they were looking for funds. In his recent budget motivation speech, he said the ministry is undertaking activities to expand at more public health facilities to improve the delivery of public health services at all levels. He said the ministry received a total of $10.9 billion Namibian dollars for the financial year 2024-2025, from which a total of $457 million Namibian dollars will be used for infrastructure development. The health minister said that with the population growth from $2.1 million in 2011 to $3 million last year, the increased population size has put pressure on the health sector. We completed several projects which were previously abandoned before COVID-19. There were less than 40 ICU beds in public health facilities around the country, shared among Vinduk Central Hospital, Katitura Intermediate Hospital, Oshakati Intermediate Hospital, and Onanjokwe Intermediate Hospital, Shangula said. To remedy this situation, he said the ministry embarked on the establishment of ICUs at various hospitals around the country. Shangula said the ministry is investing in establishing modern ICUs ICU facilities in different district hospitals. The ICUs for Katima Mlilo and Ketman's District Hospitals were completed in 2023. 
Now the Minister of Gender Equality, Poverty, Eradication and Social Welfare, Doreen Sioka, says the government has provided social grants to 373,017 orphans and vulnerable children who are currently on the grant system as of the 31st of March this year. According to her, a sum of 1.7 billion Namibian dollars is allocated to Main Division 5, which is child care and protection for the 2024-2025 financial year, to cover expenditures related to programs and activities aimed at the provision of child care and protection services, food rations for the Namibia Children's Home and after-school centers, as well as personnel expenditure. The primary purpose of this program is to improve care and protection for the well-being of children. In 2023-2024, the social workers in the ministry attended to 1,753 children. A total number of 18 victims were accommodated at the shelters, which was during that period. Now, Namibian Sun made a probe into the usage of social grants, unearthing a growing trend in the misuse of vulnerability grants to buy alcohol and settle debts. A social worker in the Nkuninkuni constituency located located in Kavango West region, Felixia Hamutenya, told Namibian Sun that there is a growing trend in misusing vulnerability grants intended to provide financial relief in her constituency. The grants designed to support individuals in dire need address issues such as food insecurity and other essential items. However, Hamutenya says she has observed a concerning trend whereby some recipients are spending their grants on alcohol or settling debt. Governor of the Orongo region, Neville Andre, addressed regional education performance improvement plans as well as regional result analysis. This stakeholder engagement meeting took place earlier today at the Ministry of Fisheries Auditorium. Teachers, principals and learner representatives from the different circuits in the region were in attendance. Precious Nitao Napo reports. The Orongo region has got potential for hardworking learners. We must just continue motivating them and show that we believe in them to achieve better. If we boost their confidence level, we will have productive young people that will further grow this country. Let us therefore stand together and help the Namibian child to spread their wings and become best in their endeavor. As we are gathered here today, we must reaffirm our shared responsibility to the principles of equity, access, and excellence in education in our region. So that we overcome the above mentioned challenges, let us not be demoralized to strive for better performance of our learners. We still have some grade one learners that are not yet placed and we are going towards the middle of the year. And that is very worrisome. Let us sit down and see what possible ways we can look into address this challenge. Now, the president of the Security Association of Namibia, Dinge Nina Uwatapama, pronounced the position of the association following an unlawful strike by hundreds of security guards in Vintuk earlier this week. Uwatapama said the actions of the guards after being misled by activist Michael Amshilelo would have grave consequences and added that the strike resembled actions of a banana republic, lacking a clear understanding of the law. Elizabeth Klebes reports. Today with Sunset News, the U.S. Ambassador to Namibia, Randy Berry, announced a sizable donation with regards to the Alta Festa Moe in Community Talk.
In community talk, the U.S. Ambassador to Namibia, Randy Berry, announced the donation of 250,000 U.S. dollars, equivalent to 4,662,500 Namibian dollars, to the Namibia Craft Center. This for the renovation and repurposing of the historic Alta Festa building, Jamama Ndebele reports. It's uh, my deepest uh, honor to announce the award of the Ambassador's Fund for Cultural Preservation totaling 250,000 U.S. Uh, dollars to the Namibia Craft Center. Uh, this grant has been allotted for the renovation of, uh, of the Alta Fest, a recognized cultural heritage site that is under the custodianship and care of the Ministry of Education, Arts, and Culture. Just a word about the program. Uh, the U.S. Department of State uh, created the Ambassador's Fund for Cultural Preservation in order to support cultural projects uh, across uh, the globe. The AFCP, as we call it in shorthand, protects and preserves not only historical buildings like this one, but also has been used in the past to preserve artifacts, to preserve archaeological sites, but also to preserve language, ceremonies, and customs of indigenous peoples all around the world. Reiterating the sentiments voiced by a former colleague of mine, the Assistant Secretary for Education and Cultural Affairs, Patricia Harrison, the AFCP allows uh, us, the United States, to show another side of our country, one that recognizes the contributions of culture, that values it uh, in all countries, because we understand that this enriches us all. Heritage preservation allows us to work closely with our international partners to affirm our respect for other cultures as we jointly identify areas of critical need for preservation. The Ambassador's Fund for Cultural Preservation successfully demonstrates, I believe, in concrete, visible, tangible ways uh, my own government's commitment to understanding and preserving not only our own heritage, but the heritage of others. In economic news after the break, Namibia-China trade surpasses 24 billion Namibian dollars in 2023. Connection. It's in the human touch. The feeling of belonging. It inspires us and empowers us creates clarity from complexity. It starts new conversations, unlocks the power of advice, and makes an impact on your life. At Alex Forbes, we pioneer insight to provide you with advice that connects your decisions of today to your impact tomorrow. In economic news, Namibia's trade relations with China have surged, with bilateral trade volumes surpassing 24 billion Namibian dollars in 2023. China, consistently ranking as Namibia's second largest trading partner, experienced a notable 16.5% year-on-year trade volume growth. Charge d'affaires of the Chinese embassy Shenzhen noted the deepening economic cooperation between China and Namibia, citing the highly complementary nature of their economies. This comes as China is a stable export market for Namibia's minerals, such as uranium, lithium and marble, as well as agricultural products such as beef and oysters. China welcomes more Namibian products to enter the Chinese market, and the two governments are currently negotiating on the export of Namibia's deep-sea red crab, abalone, mutton, grape, frozen lobster and others to China, said Jian at the promotion conference of the 7th China International Import Expo and Hong Kiao International Economic Forum in Namibia on Tuesday. Meanwhile, he added that China's electrical equipment, machinery, steel, garments and articles of daily use have also provided Namibian consumers with a variety of choices with high quality and low prices. Jian highlighted that China has also been the largest source of foreign direct investment in Namibia for many years as more than 50 Chinese enterprises have invested or been doing business in Namibia. It is very interesting, 24 billion being the total of the trade that has been surpassed by the two countries. Let's head over to the indicators. The Namibian dollar trades at 18.76 next to the US dollar, 20.10 Namibian dollars gets you one euro, 23.47 means you can get a British pound for one Chinese yuan that's going to cost you 2.59 Namibian dollars. Looking at commodities, gold is trading at 2,335.04 per ounce. Brent crude oil and copper are also in the red, whilst platinum managed an uptick of plus 0.88%. 
Now, Russia and Germany earlier today urged countries in the Middle East to show restraint with regards to Israel. Russia and Germany earlier today urged countries in the Middle East to show restraint and Israel said it was preparing to meet all its security needs in a region on the edge of an Iranian threat to strike Israel. The German airline Lufthansa, one of only two Western carriers flying to Tehran, extended a suspension of its flights to the Iranian capital and Russia warned against travel to the Middle East. Iran has vowed revenge for the April 1 airstrike on its embassy compound in Damascus that killed a top Iranian general and six other Iranian military officers rasheting up tension in a region already strained by the Gaza war. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said Israel was keeping up its war in Gaza but making security preparations elsewhere. Whoever harms us, we will harm them. We are prepared to meet all of the security needs of the state of Israel, both defensively and offensively, he said in comments released following a visit to an Air Force base. The conflict has spread across the Middle East since the eruption of the Gaza war, with Iran-backed groups declaring support for the Palestinians waging attacks from Lebanon, Yemen and Iraq. Tehran has avoided confrontation with Israel or the United States while declaring support for its allies. German Foreign Minister Annalena Baerbock called her Iranian counterpart Hossein Amira Bodolian to urge maximum restraint to avoid further escalation. Very interesting and absolutely a tense, tense position that the Middle East finds itself in the world indeed with regards to peace. Let's head over to the weather. The capital city, Vinduk, is expecting to be partly cloudy, much like most of the country right now. It is rather hot in Enana, Oshakati and Ruakana, expecting 33 degrees Celsius maximums. Sunny across the board, at least if you're looking to the right side, Wavish Bay, Mariento, equally sunny. However, it is partly cloudy in Riobot, Sokopmund and Henty's Bay. A little chilly though in Sokopmund, 15 degrees Celsius minimum with a 17 degrees Celsius maximum. That's been our weather on Sunset News. We're going to take a quick break before Ari Hochard takes us through the sport. Neopaints has established a 67-year Namibian legacy, creating personalized paint solutions that blend quality and innovation for the Namibian people. We pride ourselves in being a 100% Namibian-owned company, investing in our country and our people by employing and empowering true Namibians. With every brush stroke, Neo Paints commits to our quality guarantee and always delivering a coat of excellence. At Neo Paints, we always stay true to our country. We are as Namibian as you. Good day everyone, time for international sports news and starting off with tennis news first, it's the Monte Carlo Masters uh, that continues still week one, a round of 32 games uh, played in Monte Carlo and it's a clay season that started leading up to uh, the Roland Garros that will start in May. And uh, news from the tournament, uh, it's a thousand tournaments, all the top players in the world play, it is number two in the world, Yannick Sinner, he had a comfortable win against Sebastian Corda of the United States and the score there was 6-1 and 6-2, he reaffirmed that he's one of the favourites in the tournament. And uh, also uh, news from the number six seed, Andrei Rublev of Russia. He's out of the tournament. Uh, the first uh, top ten seed player to be out. He lost to Alexei Popirin. He's also from Russia. The score there six four and six four. Number 10 seed Herbert Hukratz, he safely threw. He beat uh, a clay court specialist in Roberto Agu and he beat him 7 5, 7 6, a tough two setter for him. And also in the last 16 winning rounds in uh, the round 32 is uh, Stefano Stitsipas, he's number 12 seed, and also the number 7 seed Holger Rune, he's also through, and then number 8 seed Kasparut, also safely through to the round of 16.
Continuing international sports news with soccer news, the football news, it's a Champions League that continued its quarterfinals that's been played and a, a very good game for Barcelona. They had a away game in Paris against Paris Saint-Germain and it was a 3-2 win for Barcelona in the away game and uh, it was a good performance by Rapina. He's the winger from Brazil that plays for Barcelona. He scored twice in the 37th minute and also in the 62nd minute of the game. Not a good game for Kylian Mbappe. He's the star player for PSG um, and uh, he failed to impress in the game. And uh, is, uh, there's also another game that was played. It was Atletico Madrid. Uh, they won at home. They beat Borussia Dortmund in uh, that game by two goals to one. And uh, the both second leg games of these games I just talked about will be played next week, Tuesday the 16th. And to close of today's international sports news, it is golf news from the Masters, the first major on the men's calendar that will start on Thursday. And the news from the organizers is that uh, there's a possible weather delay in round one. And uh, it is uh, because there's expected uh, thunderstorms and also heavy rain and gusts of up to 70 kilometers an hour. The scheduled start for the tournament will be 8 a.m. That is local time at Augusta. And that will be 2 uh, p.m. in uh, Namibian time. And uh, that is when uh, Gary Player, Jack Nicholas, and also Tom Watson. Uh, they are the honorary opening of uh, just tee shots the hit of the first tee. During the 2023 tournament uh, last year in the second round there were also disruptions and it was also thunderstorm and strong winds then uh, and uh, the organizers are quite concerned about the safety of the players and also the spectators. There will be three South Africans playing in the tournament. It's the Charles Swatzel that's play, playing in the tournament because he's a previous winner. Then also Eric van Rooyen uh, because he's in the top 50 on the world rankings. And uh, the top leading amateur last year in uh, the world, uh, Christo Lamprecht, he's from South Africa. And he will play in the same three ball as Charles Swatzel. That's international sports news for today. Hope you have a great sport day and we'll talk international sport again tomorrow. Goodbye. Welcome to What's Cooking, where culinary passion meets expert insights. Somebody must really want to cook and want to cook good food. Immerse yourself in the bustling world of professional kitchens as top chefs create mouthwatering dishes. Join us for in-depth interviews as our host explores the experiences and expertise of our guest chefs. Don't miss out. Tune in to What's Cooking on NTV every Friday at 2100 hours and let the culinary adventure begin. Thank you for staying with us throughout the broadcast. Sunset News screens on DSTV Channel 2 at 5, Go TV Channel 25 every weekday and Sunday from 7.30 p.m. as well as on oneup2.com. From me, Ashwin Berry and the Sunset News team, don't end your day without us.